Hello YouTube, it's Bethany from Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. There's a reason I'm so close to the screen. I don't want you to see what's behind me, not just yet. I have the most amazing custom order behind me. This piece is phenomenal. It's exquisite. It's gorgeous. It's really old. And I am so honored that this client has chosen me to update this piece for her. So without further ado, you guys are gonna watch me from start to finish jazz up this bench. Yeah, that's right, it's a bench. The heavens of antique goodness has sprinkled down on moi. Check out this piece, isn't it amazing? So this piece, from what I've been told, dates back to 1870 to 1900. My client, who was stationed in Germany, saw this in an old decommissioned cow barn. Yeah, a cow barn. And all she could see was the arm. And that was it for her. She saw the arm and she's like, I gotta see what else if that is attached to. And it's this gorgeous, gorgeous bench. So here is the vision, here are the plans. So some people out there, I know I'm gonna hear in the comment section, why are you painting that? Why are you updating that? Well, you know what? It's my clients and that's what she wants to do to it. So right now she's not enjoying it as much as she could. She wants to go with a lighter, brighter look. If you notice, um, it's really dark and we're losing some of the details because it's so dark. I'll do a close up angle here where you can see there's just some really gorgeous ornate swirl carvings. I mean, it's so full of details. Ah, so this is our vision. We're gonna do some whites, we're gonna do some grays, and then we're gonna do kind of like a minty green. We're gonna distress it. We're gonna sand the seat area here, right here. And we're gonna kind of do like a, a whitewash. And then there's a little area here, a little oval area. We're gonna have that whitewashed as well to match the seat to kind of pull that in. And this is gonna be loads of fun to see this piece come alive with some life and we are going to give it the facelift that it deserves. So, you guys come with me, this is gonna be a fun one. Let's go. Guys, before I start sanding and painting and prepping this piece, there is some repair work that needs to be done. My client left me all the goodies, or I should say missing pieces, inside the bench. And it doesn't look terrible of a fix. We got some missing trim here that goes on either side. And then I believe the rest of these pieces, once I flip the bench up, they attach to the bottom portion. So nothing too terrible. I also noticed we got kind of, yeah, we got a big crack over here. So right here, is where that missing trim is. And then we've got a missing crack here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm probably gonna fill that with some um, like epoxy wood putty just to beautify and smooth that up. And I think that's it for repairs. Nothing too terrible. So I'm gonna get started with that. I'm going to clamp everything, get it all situated, and then we'll get to prepping the piece. Okay guys, I fixed all the pieces that needed fixing and I wanted to share with you the products that I use when it comes to re-gluing pieces to old pieces of furniture. So I love um, epoxy, clear epoxy by Gorilla. Love that stuff. Um, so I'll use that and clamp a piece. I know it says it sets in five minutes, but I'm one of these people, I let it set overnight. I just rather be safe than sorry. Then I also used um, all purpose putty by Bondo. This stuff stinks. You gotta be very careful with it. Um, I did a prior YouTube video on how to make a mold out of a missing piece on your furniture. Now the client told me she gave me all the pieces to this old bench. There was one little section missing. And so what I had to do was fill it in. And when I do that, I don't wanna just use wood putty. Wood, generic wood putty to me, can have a habit over time to just like crumble and break down. So for me, I want the strongest stuff out there. So I'm gonna use Bondo. 
Um, I love this stuff. It's just very um, potent. It smells very much. Like I did this yesterday and I can still smell it in my basement. So just do your research on this, but it works great if you have to fill in a piece. And I'm gonna show you guys right here. Let me change my camera. All right, you guys, so here's the piece that was intact, okay? And then when I put the pieces all together, this piece was missing over here. So I put a piece of tape here, a piece of tape here, and then I filled it with Bondo. And then I put some um, colored wood putty on top of it and I'm gonna sand it smooth, but that gives you an idea of how I use that. And then you're gonna see all the shiny stuff. That is the epoxy. And again, I'll sand that down. And then once I shellac and paint, that will disappear. But I wanted to show you everything I repaired. Oh, I've got two big cracks on either side. So I filled those with Bondo as well. We got two big cracks on this bench and I want things to be smooth once I paint it. So I filled those in. Took me a little while, but we got this bench nice and sturdy and strong and everything's put back together. So now we're gonna go on to the next step. Okay guys, I started to sand a bit. I sanded along the edges, um, cause I noticed the wood was kind of beat up, but I'd like it to just be smoother when I apply my paint. Um, and then also that new part here, I had to sand the Bondo smooth. It was a little rough and now it's looking very sharp. And my favorite sander that is pretty new to me, but I love this little one by Festool. This one is great to get into tight corners. My two other Festool sanders that I have, they're orbital, that means circular. Again, if you know this stuff, excuse me talking to you like you're three years old, but some people don't know what an orbital, orbital sander is. So the orbital sander is the circular one. And if you try to get up into tight corners, you can't. And so this one is great for that. It's a small rectangular, rectangular sander. I believe it's like a three by five or three by four. And this one by Festool is the RTS 400. I love this little guy. So he's great getting into um, tight corners and a long trim um, and into like small areas that my orbital can't get into. So that's what I've been doing. I'm going to quickly here flip the bench right side up because I got the underside done that I need to get done. And then we're gonna sand that bench part where you would sit because that's the area that my client wants whitewashed. So I have to make sure I really sand that really, really well. So we're gonna get on to that step. Okay, guys, I am ready to sand the seat of this awesome bench. I'm going to be using my Festool ETS EC150. That's the larger of the orbital sanders. And I'm going to turn it on. It's hooked up to my dust extractor, and let's go. She's looking good, isn't she? Um, so she has been sanded everywhere where she needs to be sanded. Um, like I said, the vision here is we're going to whitewash this um, and this part right here as well. So those coordinate. The rest of the bench is going to get painted. So now I need to prep that area to be painted and I prep it two ways. If you have watched my videos in the past, you know I am a big cheerleader uh -huh, uh -huh, for prepping. Um, it is late, I'm starting to get delusional. Or it could be the leftover fumes from the Bondo, who knows? Um, I do two things before I paint. First things first, I'm going to use crud cutter. This is a deglosser, it's awesome, I always use it. And also, I've just sanded it. Now I also take my shop vac to it and I get most of the sand dust off of the piece of furniture, 
but I also need to go over and just make sure the surface just doesn't have anything on it before I start painting it. So that's what, that's when crud cutter comes in. Okay. So I'm going to spray all the rest of it, take a rag to it and just, you'll just see grossness come off this piece of furniture. My rags will be full of just gunk and gunga. So I'm going to do that. And then after I do this, um, I'm going to schlack. And I'm going to do two coats of shellac just in the areas that I'm going to paint. So anything besides the bench and this little circle area down here, I'm going to shellac. I'm going to do two coats. And shellac will prevent bleed through or wood tannins coming to the surface. This bench is very, very dark wood. So I'm definitely going to shellac this baby. And I don't want any issues down the line when I apply my water-based top coat. I don't want any surprises of wood tannins coming through because that's when they sneak up on you. Wood tannins don't necessarily come through right away. So you could paint your piece of furniture a nice, beautiful, bright white paint. And then you get ready to put your water-based top coat on. And then all of a sudden stains come through, dark brown color comes through, and you're like, what is going on? That's wood tannins coming to the surface. So do shellac and you won't have that issue and do two coats, that's what I recommend. So I'm gonna get going and do my crud cutter and my shellacking and I'm gonna quit yakking. Okay guys, we are at the fun part of the transformation. I am ready to paint, yay! Okay, so she has been fixed, epoxied, Bondo, cracks, sealed, smoothed out, sanded here, sanded there. That's why I have those areas protected now so I don't get any paint on them. And she's been shellacked two coats. That's why she's a little shiny. And now we're ready to paint the first layer. So we're gonna do a very bright white, then we're gonna do a light gray, and then we're going to do kind of like this mint green color, and then we're gonna distress it, and we're gonna make it look beautiful. And then we're gonna add some gold gilding wax here on the scroll work. And this piece is just gonna be gorgeous once I'm done with her. So I'm gonna put her on a time-lapse video right now so you guys can watch me paint this baby. is looking really good. I got a nice foundation set. Um, as you can see, I have the bench part covered with paper and this is green frog tape along with that kind of, it's an oval shape here because remember um, I sanded those areas and I'm going to be whitewashing them. So now we're going to get into some layering, some more paint colors. So if you're looking to do like a weathered look or an aged look with paint, it's important to build layers of paint and then you sand the layers away of different colors and that creates a lot of dimension. So I always start with like a white base. That's what I built here. And now I'm going to do a light gray color and then I'm gonna follow up that color with the um, light mint color and then we'll sand the bench lightly allowing those colors to all peek through in different areas and that's what creates a beautiful weathered look. So now I'm going to put this on a time lapse and you guys can watch me apply the gray paint. with the antique German bench. So 
I did two coats of white paint. I did one coat of light gray, and I started to distress right here on this top part, and I really like how the white is coming through, but I decided to stop on that. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and apply the coastal green color. Now this is like a light mint green. I love this color. It's by Maison Blanche. I love this line of paint. It's a chalk paint, gorgeous, gorgeous consistency. It dries super fast and then it distresses really nice. But this color is so awesome. So there you go. It is a mint, mint green. And so we're gonna be adding that on top and we're gonna give this piece a more coastal look. And then from there, I'm gonna distress and we're gonna have all these beautiful light colors coming through, the white, the light gray, and then this mint green. So I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna put it on a time-lapse video and we are gonna get painting again. <laughs> So, stay with me. We're going to keep hammering away at this piece. conditioner too so whatever you're using I say go with that if it's water-based go with a water-based wood conditioner if you're doing oil-based go with an oil-based wood conditioner I apply my wood conditioner with a two inch foam brush I let it sit anywhere between 15 minutes and a half hour just read the back of the can and it'll tell you how long to wait so that's already been sitting and now I'm ready to apply, it's called Simply White by Minwax. I really love this stain. It's very, very white. So you're gonna see me apply it to the bench seat here. I'll probably do two coats. 
And then I'm also going to apply it right here to that oval area. And then if I need more definition on the bench, I'll be applying some lining wax. So this will all be on a time lapse. Here we go. <laughs> She's going in the direction that my client envisioned. She wanted a coastal French look. Now, where does the French look come in? I'm going to be applying some gold gilding wax to the ornate areas. And I'm just gonna start off small. I don't wanna like overdo it. So I'm gonna start like in this area, the center area, there's these cute little grapes. I'm gonna put some gold gilding wax on that, um, this area as well, and then just around the oval part here. We're gonna start with that. I'd rather just start with a little bit of gold gilding wax and then work my way up. I just don't want it to overpower the piece because as you can see, she's looking just gorgeous. So I'm done painting, I'm done staining, and now you're gonna see me on a time-lapse video apply the gold gilding wax, and I'll show you what it looks like. Um, I use really, really small, fine brushes when I apply it. I'll also sometimes use um, the pad of my finger. I've had this stuff forever. It's like a thick consistency, looks like this and it really jazzes up your piece really nice. There's a lot of companies who sell gold gilding wax. Um, you can find it at most craft stores. You can find it on Amazon too. So I'm gonna get started, get this piece all prettied up, and then we're gonna be done. The only last thing I'll need to do is apply a top coat. <laughs> like it was half done and I didn't like that. So um, I sent the pictures to the client and she said, go for it, do it all. So I'm glad she did and it looks fabulous. I think it looks really put together. Now with the gold gilding wax, it gives it that kind of like that French flair, that just extra fanciness that this bench needed. And I just love the color. I love the wood um, with the whitewash in it. It just looks like it was meant to look like this. I mean, it just really pops now. And now my client has a piece that she can just truly enjoy once again. So thank you so much for watching this entire video from start to finish on how I transformed this bench. I'm going to link below the description of this video, all the materials, colors of the paint, and the same that I use so you guys can, if you want to, you can replicate this look. Thank you for joining me once again. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it, share it on your Facebook page. Um, let people know about my channel here on YouTube. I love it. Um, you can also follow me all over social media. Um, you can find me on Facebook, and that's right here. That's at Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. That is my business page. I post all my projects, all my inventory, and all my furniture pieces that are for sale are listed there under the shop section. You can also find me on Instagram, and that's here. That's at Bethany.Yousef, and there's a lot of stuff going on there. I do a lot of just 
funny stuff. I post things with my dog, um, TikToks, you name it, you know, the whole social media thing. <laughs> you can find me there. So once again, thank you for joining me and I'm going to go to bed. It is July 4th here. Happy Independence Day, everybody. And thank you again so much for watching.